Now, in the last part of this tutorial, we finally arrived at a circuit that drives an n-channel MOSFET in the high side of the circuit from a microcontroller, but it's quite complicated and it requires the use of both a bootstrap with a capacitor and a diode and an opto-isolator circuit, which I'm calling decoy, the dual complementary opto-isolator MOSFET driver. So what I've done is I've combined the decoy opto-isolator driver and the bootstrap circuit, capacitor and diode, together on this small circuit board. Now, if you'd like more information on how the decoy MOSFET driver works, click on the link on the annotation or click the link in the description below and there are a series of videos on how the decoy driver came into existence and how it's developed into this high side N channel MOSFET driver. Now, just returning to N channel MOSFET on the low side for a moment, it is possible to drive this directly from the microcontroller by connecting the gate wire directly to the digital output on the microcontroller. The disadvantage with this arrangement is that the gate's only getting five volts when it's turning on, and that's not going to give us the low on resistance that this MOSFET is capable of. By using the decoy driver, the MOSFET's gate is now being pulled all the way up to 12 volts through this upper opto-isolator and all the way down to zero volts through this lower opto-isolator. And do you remember the interface circuit we came up with for the P-channel MOSFET? This single transistor interface here, if you look at the circuit, the disadvantage with this is that when the transistor is on, the MOSFET gate is pulled actively down through the transistor. But when it turns off, the MOSFET gate is being pulled passively up through the resistor. And that's asymmetric. We've got an active pull down, a passive pull up. And that can mean that the time that the MOSFET gate takes to rise can be a lot longer than it's uh, the time it takes to fall. If we use the decoy driver, to drive the P-channel MOSFET, the gate of the MOSFET is being actively pulled up through the upper opto-isolator and then actively pulled down through the lower opto-isolator. This is the circuit for the decoy opto-isolator driver and you can see that we have two transistors. The active pull down is the lower NPN transistor and the active pull up is the upper NPN opto-transistor. And so we've seen that the decoy driver is able to drive N-channel and P-channel MOSFETs and also this holy grail configuration of an N-channel MOSFET on the high side of the circuit by adding in the capacitor bootstrap. Now I'm going to try and explain how this circuit works in both the off state and the on state. So what I've done for the moment is turn the lamp off and I've done that by connecting this yellow wire to VCC. There's actually five volts on here. And one of the oddities of the decoy driver is that it causes a logical inversion. But let's consider this to be the off state. And I'll just explain what's going on. So at the moment, because the bulb, this thing here, is off, this point here, source of the MOSFET, is actually being pulled down through the low resistance of the filament of the bulb to ground. In addition, the negative of this capacitor is also at ground and the gate of the MOSFET is also at ground because it's being pulled down through the lower opto-isolator to this point here. Gate is also connected to source. So in effect, everything's at ground. Now, with the negative of the capacitor at ground, the positive of the capacitor is being charged through this diode from 12 volts. 12 volts through the diode, charging the capacitor up to 12 volts. Now in fact, throughout the whole operation of this circuit, the voltage on the capacitor changes very little. It remains at 12 volts pretty much the whole time. And so we can think of that as a miniature power supply, which is being used to provide 
the necessary voltages on the MOSFET gate. Now the second state is where the lamp is on and here source at this point here the top of the load is at 12 volts. It has to be 12 volts because otherwise the lamp wouldn't be on. So now the negative of the capacitor is also at 12 volts because it's connected to source. So the positive of the capacitor has now actually risen up to about 24 volts. It's not discharging because it can't discharge through the MOSFET gate and it also can't discharge through this now reverse biased uh, diode. So the charge just remains on that capacitor. It won't remain on there forever, but it's been on there for a fair while, certainly while I've been talking. So now the gate is 12 volts above source. Gate is at about 24 volts with respect to ground. Source is at 12 volts with respect to ground. And that's where the complication arises. Because when we're switching this lamp on and off, source is moving up and down between 0 volts and 12 volts, the gate has to actually move up and down between 0 volts and 24 volts. And it's the bootstrap that achieves that um, configuration. So that's the decoy MOSFET driver. The LEDs switch in a complementary fashion. The opto isolators have an active pull up and an active pull down. Only one is ever happening at any one time, of course. And for the N-channel MOSFET in the high side, we can also add the bootstrap circuit. Now I should point out that the decoy driver is not suitable in every circuit configuration, so I'll just mention a couple of the downsides. One is that opto isolators are not particularly quick. Now I've driven this circuit up to about 15 kilohertz. I think it could probably be driven up to about 20 kilohertz, but certainly not beyond that. The other thing is, of course, that with these LEDs being lit, one LED plus one opto LED is on all the time in effect. And that means that there's a current draw of about 10 milliamps. So the decoy driver may not be suitable in circuits where very low current draw is required. But apart from those two things, the decoy driver is fairly flexible, can be used on N channel, P channel, high side, low side. And of course you can build it yourself. Now I'm not saying that um, it's any better than commercially available MOSFET driver chips, but this one, you can build it yourself, you can understand how it works. And then of course, if you decide that a commercially available driver chip would actually be better in your circuit, well by all means, use it.